So I was watching Dragon Ball the other day and I saw something that really caught my eye. It was the start of the series when Goku actually ran into Monster Carrot. Some of you may not know who that is. He was a villain that was shown at the start of Dragon Ball and pretty much his power, his unique ability was if you were touched by him, then you would turn into a carrot. Therefore making him very hard to actually fight, but Goku does end up beating him and as a punishment, Goku doesn't want to kill him, but as a punishment, Goku pretty much ties him up with two of his henchmen around him and with his power pole, with the use of his power pole, he extends him all the way to the moon. Now what caught my eye the most was not really the inconsistency of Goku taking humans up to space, instead I'm more interested in looking at the power pole because the power pole just took four people from Earth to the moon in a very short amount of time. So the question pending is, what are the power pole's limits, if it even has limits? In other words, how far can the power pole actually extend? The simple answer is, we don't know. However, with the information given, we can approximate what it can come close to, but we will never truly know the full limitations of the power pole unless Akira Toriyama comes out and says so. So going back to Monster Carrot, Goku managed to extend his power pole all the way to the moon. This essentially means that the power pole is capable of expanding to a length of 384,000 kilometers. For my American viewers, that's roughly 238,606 miles. Unfortunately, that is all that is known about how far the power pole can actually extend. It could potentially extend much further than that of the distance from Earth to the moon, but then again, we don't know, and it would just be ridiculous to try and justify why it could extend further than what we have seen. However, another thing I do want to bring up in this is that it is unknown how long it took Goku to actually travel from the Earth to the Moon and back, but I would assume since Bulma was with them and Bulma is the type of person to complain about things if they take too long or if things don't go her way, therefore leading me to believe that Goku would have taken a very short amount of time to actually get to the Moon and back when you compare it to real life spaceships. So with the technology that we currently have on Earth, it takes about three days to get to the moon. Just to get to the moon. Not to come back, just to get from Earth to the moon. It takes roughly around three days. And we know for a fact that it didn't take Goku more than 24 hours to actually get to the moon and back because when he returned back to Earth, it was still daytime, it was still the same day. Now I'm not one to pull numbers out of thin air, but for this I feel like I have to. From the reaction that we just got from Bulma, I truly feel that if Goku was gone for an hour, Bulma would have complained, but she didn't. Instead, she just looked at Goku and said, where did you go? The way she said it, she sounded more confused than actually having an angry tone in her voice. So at most, I'm gonna have to give Goku five minute trip to the moon, five minute trip back down to Earth. That's the most I can see reasonable. Now, if we're going by those numbers, which is more of an educated guess than anything, then we would have to do a fancy little equation called distance over time to calculate how fast the power pole was actually traveling. So the moon is 384 million meters away from the earth. Goku got there in five minutes, as I just explained. Now when you convert five minutes into seconds, it turns into 300 seconds. So the distance being 384 million meters over 300 seconds will result in 1,280,000 meters per second. Now guys, that's just a rough speed of how fast the power pole can actually extend if it's going at top speed, which I'm assuming it was. Just to put that into perspective, the power pole was actually traveling 1 300th of the speed of light. Now I need to stress, this is off my numbers. This could be way faster, but this is what I think. I don't want to go too high because I don't want people to get mad and I don't want to go too low because I don't want people to get mad. So I think we can come to the general conclusion that the power pole isn't just a stick that's painted red. It's a magical staff that has the power to do pretty much whatever the wielder wants. So anyway guys, I want to thank you all for watching this video. If you did find it informative, if you did find it interesting, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe. There's plenty more Dragon Ball Z videos coming your way. And I will see you guys, of course, in the next Dragon Ball Z video.